Okay, bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala wa ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, Jazakumullah khairan, brothers and sisters, and welcome back for another um, session with Sahaba Academy. We have once again with us our brother, uh, John Fontaine, who with the topic about uh, Isa and the Injil. And we have a very um, bold claim from our brother John that the Injil is not the Bible. And what does he mean by this? And this might be shocking to many of the people. Uh, this is what we're going to cover, inshallah, ta'ala, in this session. But before we get into that, I want to ask our brother John to tell us a little about his, you know, his background. Having come up like myself as a Christian, uh, you, were, you were what, Catholic or Protestant? What were you raised as? I was a Protestant, a royalist. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was raised as, as, as an Irish Catholic, obviously. Subhanallah. Um, yeah, yeah, so alhamdulillah. It's love artists together. Enemies. Uh, <laughs> just brother, just, just to let the, let the viewers know, sorry to cut you, Shay. Um, yeah, you know, it, it's like uh, the difference between Catholicism and Protestantism is in, our, in Ireland. It's kind of like Sunni and Shia, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's like that much tension between them. It's funny, even I remember I, I met a, uh, an elderly couple uh, from a small village. Uh, we had stopped in, we were at their house for some time there. When we were trying, they actually opened up for us, to, me and a brother, to pray in their house, subhanAllah. And as we were talking, she was like the only Protestant we're talking in the south, in the village in Ireland, you know, these village areas. And she's like the only Protestant in the town. And they look at her as being a cafe, right? Yeah. And, and 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 he married her, and you know his family cut him off, and it was it was it was really really hard, really hardcore, you know, for them during that yeah. time. So, so when a, when an Irish person asks me, are you, are you Protestant? You know, are you, are you Protestant or Catholic? I say I'm a Muslim. So they say, are you a Muslim Protestant or a Muslim? Alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> so so your trip in in in, in Christianity, what, what was it for you that really? You know, kind of stuck out to you when before you became Muslim. You know, was there something in the Bible and Christianity uh, in Islam that, that, stuck, that hit you in the beginning, it's similar to the same topic they were talking about tonight? Yeah, so um, uh, I was raised as a Protestant Church of England. Um, my family, we, we, we attended church, but I wouldn't say we were like uh, strict Christians. Um, I I did believe in God. I've always believed in, in God. And um, I remember from a very young age, we was asked to write a song about God in church. And my song was Jesus and God. And the, 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 the priest, he changed it. He said, no, Jesus is God. And mm -hmm. uh, from the age of seven years old, I was like, no way. You know, that's, that was kind of what clicked for me that um you know christianity is not what i believe in um because i was i was a, i was still on the fiddle you know i believed in the oneness of god and um and so for me i started that my logic was that jews must be correct because they came before jesus and they believe in one god so i guess i wanted to be like the jews i started to look into to Judaism and more, more so of the Old Testament. And, and then, you know, the more you study, the more you realize that, that they, they don't have anything from Moses or from Jesus. And, and in fact, it's just, it's just a, a collection of writings by people. And in this modern day and age, you know, you, you can't base your faith on that. And, and, and inshallah, we'll, we'll, do, we'll go into this today and, and you know, this is kind of what set me on my my research of, of, of clarifying the Islamic understanding. Because what's interesting is when I when I found Islam at the age of 23, I was a bit reluctant to come to Islam because Muslims were telling me we also believe in the Bible. And, and I'd kind of I'd left the Bible. I'd left the belief in the Bible from a very young age because I knew what the Bible was. And then after more research, I realized Muslims don't believe in the Bible. You know, it's, it, 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 you might call it a semantical difference, but I think it's a lot more deeper than that. 
Um, but, but they actually believe in a Torah as a bore and an Injil that were given to these prophets. And that made sense to me. You know, and then I was like, okay, you know, I'm ready to become a Muslim. <laughs> so um, I think that's an important lesson in my journey, knowing that if we're not specific enough and we're not conveying the technically correct understanding of the Islamic understanding, it could actually lead people away from, from the religion. A lot of the times when Muslims are trying to connect with the Bible or, or, or overly use the Bible, um, I think this can sometimes actually push people away. As we, we spoke about last week and uh, last month when we were speaking about atheism, you know, a lot of the people who have become atheists are atheists because of the Bible. You know, they, they don't believe in the Bible. They, it, it doesn't stand up to uh, modern historical or textual criticism. And so when Muslims are trying to connect with the Bible, it's... Uh, it's actually putting atheists off, where if we give the correct understanding from the beginning, then, uh, you know, I think it's more appealing. The truth is always more appealing. So, inshallah, we can get into that a bit more. Very interesting. Zavalokhir. And obviously, I think one of the key things, the key points as well, when we're starting our journey and looking into these things, is that, you know, it's built on, on knowledge, on, on authentic knowledge, and of the sources of Islamic knowledge. Uh, that we, we build on that. And I know that's one of the things that you, when, when the time we were in Kuwait, you were talking about, you know, how you focused th this research on this topic, you know, going into the different hadith and going back to the scholars and talking to them. And, you know, I found you very keen, even like we had recently um, with the, you know, the Arabic department of the Sahaba Academy, one of the sheikhs talked about a similar topic, um, who's he specialized in, in, uh, in these type of studies and in, uh, in biblical studies and in, in Christianity and and he talked a bit about this as well. And I, I knew you were very keen to be able to take and benefit from him and you were taking from the scholars. So if you could talk a bit about, a bit about that, you know, th th this approach when it comes to, you know, learning these topics and, and, and basing on authentic knowledge. Yeah. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim So, yeah. You know, um, historically, when we look at the Bible and we look at the interactions uh, of Muslims with Christians, even from the time of the Prophet, Pro, the Prophet وسلم, from the time of the Prophet all the way up until today. Um, and we can start looking at the way uh, Dawah has been given uh, to the Christians and the Jews. Um, you know, when, when we look at the history of the development of Dawah, we find that the scholars in, in places like Egypt and scholars in places like India, Pakistan, they've had a lot more interaction with Christians. You know, even the scholars in Sham, historically, there were Muslim, there were Christians living, living in these lands. Um, but in, 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 in the Khalij, in, in places like Saudi and, and other parts of the Khalij, they, a lot of the scholars have not actually had contact with Christians. And, and, and some of them have never actually even seen the Bible. They've never, they've never had the Bible to, to actually look at the Bible, to, to look at what it's claiming to be. And, and for anyone who's, who's had chance to look at the Bible uh, and, and analyze it and see what it's claiming to be, it's very clear that it's not actually uh, claiming to be the Torah and the Injil, uh, which the Muslims believe in. You know, uh, you know, from the Islamic perspective, the Torah, the Zabur and Injil were books sent from Allah, uh, given to the prophets. You know, these were uh, described as the Kitab Allah. They were the Kalam Allah, the speech of Allah. These were not authored by the prophets. You know, the, the Quran is not the speech of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It's not the expression of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yes, the hadith are, they, they, they're, they're wahi in their meaning, but the expression of them, the, the language of them, is the wording of the Prophet, peace be upon him. But when it comes to the Kitab Allah, these are direct books given to the Prophets. And, and you know, what I'm saying is not something new. You know, this is what a lot of people, some people have, 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 you know, even at the beginning, you said this is like, a, you know, shocking to some people. 
It's not actually that shocking, really. Uh, most people who are involved in Dawah and have knowledge of what the Bible is, they know that the Bible is, is not claiming to be the Torah as a born in Geo. You know, it's just that where the, where the confusion comes in is in Arabic, uh, when, when scholars have written about, about the Bible, they call the Bible the Injil, or they call the New Testament the Injil. You know, so this confuses people, because sometimes when the scholars are speaking about the actual Injil, the Kitab Allah, they, they call that the Injil. And then when they're speaking about the Bible or the New Testament, they also call that the Injil. And we, we really need to make sure that there's a distinction between this. You know, even if you're speaking in, in Arabic, it's probably better to clarify that, that when you speak about the Injil, call it the Injil. And when you speak about the modern day scriptures or the books that they use, call it the Bible, you know, and, and, it, and it, it makes more sense uh, to understand it that way. So, so, so today, um, you know, it, it, it's really important to, to understand that point that it is, there's, there's a distinction between the Islamic perspective of revelation and the Kitab Allah, which was sent to the prophets, and the Judeo-Christian understanding uh, of, 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 you know, the, their understanding of revelation today and what they have today. Very good. Um, and I, I, what about the issue we were talking earlier about the issue of uh, and it, the Israeliyat when it comes to the, their narrations, even that we find in the Sunni, we're talking a bit about that. If you could elaborate a bit about that before you, you go into the topic as well. Yes. Um, See, this, this is quite important because um, obviously scholars have, have used uh, different materials for different sources of literature. You know, so for instance, in, in, in uh, the, the tafsir of the Quran, some scholars, not all scholars, have utilized some of the, the narrations from the Ahlul Kitab. Now, this is important because the, even the term Israeliat itself is a later term that, that came later, you know, but there's a, there's a famous hadith of the Prophet وسلم, where, uh, you know, he gave permission to narrate from the Bene Israel. You know, he said you, you, it's permissible to narrate from the, the children of Israel, but don't lie on him. You know, you're not allowed to lie about him. And, and the understanding of this is that the, the scholars have mentioned, and I, you, know, you mentioned it when we studied the Usul tafsir with yourself, um, with uh, Ibn Taymiyyah mentions that the understanding of this is that, that the things that disagree with Islam, of course, we reject these things. You know, if, if something's saying Isa died, that clearly uh, disagrees with the, the Quran and the Sunnah. Um, if something agrees with Islam, then we can acknowledge it to be true. You know, like, for instance, it's, the Bible speaks about uh, some of the, uh, the miracles of Isa, alayhi salam. It speaks about the mother of Isa, the Maryam. This is, this is true. This agrees with the Quran and the Sunnah. Um, and, and then there's some things that neither agree or disagree. You know, the, it, we simply don't have knowledge of these topics in the Quran and the Sunnah, and the Muslims should not affirm or deny these things. You know, we, we, sh we shouldn't speculate, we shouldn't concentrate on these things. And, and, an, and a beautiful example that Ibn Taymiyyah gives about this is in Surah Kahf uh, with the, the people of the cave where Allah mentions the dispute of, 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 the, of the people of the book where they're saying, you know, there the, are so many people and they, they have this kind of uh, dialogue about not knowing how many people of the cave there is. And, and the, the bottom line is, it's, 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 it's really doesn't matter. You know, the, these, the, the, these details um, are really not of much benefit at all. And a lot of the times they cause more confusion than anything. Um, I was having a discussion uh, the other day um, uh, with my wife about um, uh, Yahya. Um, she, she, she's studying the seerah right now and, and, and uh, she came and said this, she was speaking about the ways Yahya died about him being killed in Sajud or be killed in a tree 
And I said, look, these things are Israeli art. These are not, these are not authentic sources. And, and so as a Muslim, we must understand that we that there's a, there's a there's a time and a place for certain things. But when we're speaking about the Quran and the Sunnah and the correct understanding, the the, the actual belief system in Islam, we have to we, we have to understand and take the knowledge from the correct sources. So understanding that scholars have utilized um, sources which are outside of the authentic Hadith and the Quran, like, for instance, Israeli art, like maybe points of history, like um, even weak Hadith sometimes that are mentioned. Um, but you have to understand that this is for specific types of literature, you know, and uh, even some scholars were against this as well, you know, and you also have to bear in mind the intention of the scholar when he's writing. You know, I don't think Ibn Kathir thought that his book would be printed in uh, hundreds of different languages and, and spread, around, and it's on every single Muslim's bookshelf around the world being read by the layperson. <laughs> you know, the, if, if he knew that, maybe he would have authored in a, quite a different way. But, but you know, he's, he's recording everything. You know, the same way Imam Ahmed collected all the hadith, whether they're weak or even fabricated, he's trying to log everything, you know. And, and so it was, it's not meant to be taken as, as all authentic, you know, it, but scholars understand that, you know, you've got the Quran, you've got the authentic hadith. And then there's these kind of bits of information about Israeli, etc. The scholars don't rely on this or accept this into their into their belief, but it's just like interesting side points. Um, but yeah. often Muslims have, yeah, sorry. Just something, something to point out quickly here. I mean, when it comes to Ibn Kathir, uh, he, he's more or less so when it comes to Israeli, yeah, more what you're alluding to uh, will probably be Imam uh, Ibn Jarir al-Tabari. He's the one who, who kind of put, you know, a lot of different things in more. Ibn Kathir, he was more precise in what he chose when it came to the SNE, the, the change of narration he used. Also, we're not using Israeli art as much. Ibn, uh, Ibn Jarir, he did mention a lot more. And something very interesting about his work, which we have, it depends on, on the print that you have, um, 15 or 30 volumes. This actually is the abridged version. Subhanallah. This is the shortened version. It was actually 300 volumes that he wrote, Rahim Allah He's the, they say, the Imam of the Mufassirin. And, and um, you know, then when the people like to say, who's going to read 300 volumes? And he was shocked, you know, how could someone not read 300 volumes when it comes to the tafsir of the Quran? So he, he worked very hard to kind of summarize that 300 and the 30 volumes. And he did what you said, like you mentioned, he mentioned a lot of things, some things which maybe it's not, it might not be authentic. He might mention some Israel yet, but back then the student of knowledge and the one who would read that would be able to, to distinguish between that. Even Kathir obviously at a much lesser level than that. He doesn't use Israel yet as much. And the Asnads, he used it also a more, more precise. But even with that, his tafsir is a bit more difficult. So even now, for the laymen, they've kind of also done a, a bridge version or summarized version of that. So actually, what many, many people might not know is that the English one we have in 10 volumes, it's actually not, um, it's not the entire tafsir of Ibn Kathir. It's actually uh, mm. the abridged version that Sheikh Al-Mubarak Fori, rahimahullah, did uh, called Al-Misbah Al-Munir, put it in Arabic, and then they translated that now, the good thing about Ms. Bahan Munir, because I teach that uh, with the Zidni Institute, we're starting with them, uh, I've been teaching for some time there in, in California and America. Um, they, and I'm, the subject, one of, one of the subjects I'm teaching is Tefsir. We use this book as the resource. But what's really good about it, because I, I go back between the original and this, is that he keeps the original text of what Ibn Kathir says and the statements of the Salaf is the same. So it's actually, uh, you know, very, very beneficial. Very, it's, basically more or less the same thing. That just has a benefit. So it's more Ibn Jarir who, who does that more than, than even Kathir himself. Yes. And, and, and as you mentioned, the, the, the version that, that, is, that is popular in the English, which, which is printed, um, you know, all, all the, the, the Israeli acts have been removed um, in, in the English and, and also the, the weak Hadith have been removed. Um, and, you know, because it, it, it can confuse the... the the lay person, you know, reading these things. And it's the same with, with regards to Sira. You know, the, you know, it, when, you know, the, when, when, when scholars have written about the Sira, you know, they've, they've utilized 
um, different sources. You know, sometimes they've used weak, weak narrations and, and uh, some things have been added into the seerah that are not even authentic. Um, and, and, you, and you have to understand that, that, that these are different types of literature. But when we're speaking about the, the beliefs of Islam and when we're speaking about Dawah, you know, we have to focus on, on authentic sources. You know, we don't call to Islam. We don't uh, present Islam with these alternative sources. We stick with the Quran and, and the Sunnah. You know, as the Prophet, وسلم, uh, the, the Quran mentions where the Prophet, the Allah orders the Prophet, you know, uh, to, to invite to Allah with Basira. You know, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدُوِ اللَّهِ عَلَى بَسِيرَ You know, to, to invite to the way of the Lord with Basira, you know, with, with these, are, these are certain points. These, this is with insight. This is with truth, you know. And it's not only uh, his way, but the way of those who follow him, you know. So it's, 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 uh, uh, you know, it's, it's very important that as Muslims that we have to, convey the message of Islam, but by using Basira. And Ibn al-Qayyim points out that if you don't invite with Basira, you're not on the Sabil, subhanAllah, you're not on the way, you're, you're not doing it. And I thought that was beautiful, just flipping it like that, you know, amazing point of, you know, if you don't do that, you're not on the Sabil. And, and this is the point that when we're inviting, we're inviting with Basira, with, with truth, things that that uh, uh, cannot are uh, undeniable, not things that can be debated, and um, and so this brings us now to you know um, you know uh, how, how do we uh, convey to to the Christian? That's very important. Any question? I mean, we had with us last week our brother uh, Sheikh Abdurrahim Green uh, talking about how to use go rap for Christians, and this is something that I and I've been teaching go rap now for some time. Both, most in Arabic, but I mean also in English as well. But you know, one of the things I focus on because the question that I, I, it would it always come up, but even you know, thing that was in my mind is, can we use it for Christians? And I was like, yes, because even if you start with the, the the existence of God, it's the same you know approach that, that Allah is using in the Quran, focusing on His rububiyyah, His lordship, to then call us for His uluhiyah, for His ibadah, to worship Him as one, not join any partner. So it's obviously something very relevant even when you, we talk with Christians. So now, alhamdulillah, in, in Ayyar, they made a course now um, on how to use GORAP for Christians. I was very, very happy that, that they did that. And it's something that I'm, I'm you know, listening to myself uh, as well, alhamdulillah. But the, the point being is that something he said that I found very profound, and yeah, I, I wasn't able to attend the whole, the whole thing. I was on the road. Uh, but uh, what I did hear him say in the beginning is that he doesn't, and I've heard others say this as well, he doesn't feel that it's um you know using the bible to give dawah to christians is the best way he doesn't yeah. he doesn't think this is the best approach to give dawah um for, through my experience through you know what knowledge that i do have i i reached the same conclusion that this is not the best way to give dawah using uh the bible to give dawah to christians what do you feel about that with your experience yeah i mean i i i i agree i don't number one it's it's not needed, um, you know. The, the the Sahaba did not use the Bible to call to Islam. Um, uh, from 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 my research, I think the, the the Sahaba didn't even have access to the Bible until the Battle of Yamuk. Um, this is not this is this is uh, my own understanding, by the way. I want to make that clear. But there is actually a hadith in uh, in Bukhari mentioning at the Battle of Yamuk that they found lots of books from the Christians and they were reading them. Um, of course, before the Battle of Yamuk in Medina, there was Jews and Christians and they did have a Torah and an Injil uh, in Medina at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Now, a lot of the times people just assume that they, this is the Bible that the, the Jews and the Christians in Medina were using the Bible because the Bible was in existence at that time. It had been compiled, it had been uh, written, and it was being, it was being used in the Roman Empire, certainly by the, the Jews and the Christians within the Roman Empire. But people forget that there were many different Jewish and Christian sects 
with different Akida and with different books. Not all Jews and Christians have accepted um, the Bible or parts of the Bible to be their scripture. Um, Bart Ehrman, uh, a very famous non-Muslim scholar of the Bible, um, he's got many books regarding this, um, showing how there were many different sects of Jews and Christians. Even some Jews were pagans. They, they, had, they believed in many gods. Uh, some Jews actually believed in over 300 gods. Of course, to, of course today's Jews don't. They, they, they are more monotheistic um, uh, in, in their belief and you know, closer to Islam in that sense. But, but Christians do have, uh, they believe in the Trinity. Most Christians believe in the Trinity today. But that wasn't always the case. There was many different sects that, didn't, that believed in more gods and also one god. And of course, we know that there were Muslim uh, followers of Isa, alayhi salam, people who were following Tawheed. So if we have kind of a wider historical understanding that there were many different sects of Jews and Christians who had many different types of belief and also many different types of books. So we shouldn't presume that the Jews and the Christians in Medina were using the Bible. You know, they, 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 we, we mentioned, it's mentioned in the, in the authentic hadith that they, they had something that they referred to as the Torah. And we know that what it could be now for also used to write the Injil in Hebrew. This is mentioned in Bukhari. He used to write the Injil in Hebrew, and he recognized the Prophet وسلم, as a prophet. Arguably, what it could be known for was the first convert to Islam, <laughs> because he said, you know, I hope I'm here when your people reject you, you know, because he recognized that this is the same Namus, the same Jibreel, which came and delivered the message to, to uh, Musa, Lisa. and also he met, Ibn Hajjah mentions that also there's another hadith, I've not found this hadith, but he mentions that there's one that, where he said, this is, it's the same Namus which came to Isa, Lisa, you know, because this was the method of revelation that Jibreel would bring the Kitab Allah to the prophets. So, um, you know- You, 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 uh, you said Ibn Hajjah mentioned this, huh? Ibn Hajjim mentioned that there's, a, there's another hadith similar to the one in Bukhari, which... Yeah, which Bukhari, he mentions that they came to Musa. To Musa, yeah. yeah. But Ibn Hajjim mentions, I've not found the hadith, I can't find it, but he mentioned, uh, Allah knows best, but the point is that this was the method of delivering the wahi. You know, this is how Jibreel would bring the revelation to the prophets and, and of course, uh, deliver the, the Kitab Allah to the prophets. And so what it could be now for was not a Trinitarian. He was a true follower of Isa, He was not a pagan. He was not, he was not using the New Testament. He was not using Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, and, and many scholars have pointed this out, that he had an Injil, not an Anagil. You know, he wasn't quoting the, the Injils of, what, you know, of, of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He had a, an Injil. And, and there's even quotes of this in Geo, in the authentic Hadith, um, quoting the description of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, very, a very clear description of him, you know, very beautiful. I've collected, I've collected around 15, over 15 Hadith, quoting the Torah, the Injil in Mecca and Medina, and none of them quotes are in today's Bible. None of the quotes are in today's Bible. And the today's Bible is preserved to prior Islam. You know, it was, it was agreed upon before Islam, like the, the Christians and the Jews had, 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 had canonized these books. It was agreed upon by that time. And so we, we shouldn't presume that, that, the, that the Jews and Christians were using the Bible in Medina. You know, there's many uh, references in the authentic hadith quoting the Torah and Injil in Medina. And um, I don't think there's evidence to show that they were using the Bible uh, in the first place. Um, so, yeah, sorry, sorry. You know, I can't hear you, Sheikh. You're, you've gone quiet. Okay, I was saying uh, that one, one of the things I think is very powerful that you mentioned is that, you know, the Sahaba didn't use the Bible. Hmm. 
Um, you know, it's like, like, even, even though they might, they could have had, had access to it. They could have, they could have used it. They could have made it one of their main tools, like many of our do. I do. The Prophet said them could have focused on this. Also, the what do you call it? The um, um, he could have he could have taught them. He could have encouraged them to do this. Yeah. Uh, they could have uh, took, made, made it one of their main focus. But they focus on the Quran. So this is one of the main mistakes that I think you know that we're focusing on. And he is the barak and the blessing and how the impact of their dawah, how it was. So I mean, why are we using the tools they did this? That's something actually you know, very powerful to reflect on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and 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 not only did they not use it, they were. It, it was a very negative thing. Uh, the, there's, a, there's a statement of, um, of the Prophet وسلم, where he, he saw Umar al Khattab reading from their books. Right? I'm not going to say he was reading from the Bible. As I mentioned, he was reading from the Torah that was in Medina. We don't know exactly what that was. Okay. We've got, because you know, that we, was we definitely can't... there because in, in, the, in, the, in the narration when, when they were to, to chose to be to, for, for regimen or for this other things he told them to go back to their book to bring their book so for yeah. them to rule from that for them at you, that time you, you know this is actually an evidence that they were not using the bible subhanallah mm -hmm. because uh, so the Jews come to to uh, the prophet for judgment because one of their Jews had, had committed zina and the punishment within Islam was, was a lesser punishment for someone who's not married. And, and the punishment in the Torah was killing them. You know, it was, it was, it was death. So they came to the Prophet Sallallahu for judgment, hoping that he's going to give the, judge, the lesser judgment. And so he, he told them to bring the Torah, right? And, and they brought the Torah, and he put the Torah on a cushion. And he said, I believe in the one who sent this so this is uh, you know this is this is giving the credibility number one to this book and then when they started to read it they they covered the verses and they tried to hide the verses and and then uh, abdullah bin salam moved the the, the the their hand and and then he actually gave the judgment which is death but what's interesting it says in that torah that they must be four witnesses and they must see the eyeliner go in the eyeliner pot. Now, uh, that's a very similar ruling to Islam. We, we have a similar statement in, in, the, in the Quran and the Sunnah. But that statement of seeing the action is not mentioned in the Bible. It's not actually mentioned in the Bible, but it's mentioned in the Torah that was in Medina at the time. So this is... Uh, you know, actually showing that they had something, they had an alternative Torah. And many scholars of many, even Christian scholars have pointed this out. It, the Christian scholars seem to understand this, where they, they say that there seems to be a, 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 an alternative Torah. They call it a, like an apocrypha Torah. They call it like an unauthentic Torah, you know. And um, but, but it's, it, it, it's very possible that the Jews may have had even remnants of revelation in, in Medina. Allah knows best. Um, but, it, but there seems to be many things in the Torah that was in Medina, which uh, you know, are very clear, especially in the descriptions of the Prophet Wasallam. There's many clear descriptions about his tribe, where he's from, the, 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 the way he looks. Uh, and these descriptions are not found in the Bible. You know the the, the the descriptions which are which people try to attribute to the prophet in the Bible are very vague. You know, I, I I'm not a fan of using these in Dawah at all. Um, but but the descriptions we find in the authentic hadith are very clearly described. In fact, there's a the a, the, the ayah in the Quran where not only does it describe the prophet وسلم, it describes the Sahaba. It says that in the Torah, they're described with marks on their head, you know, and the Injil, they're described as like plants, you know, growing and, and, and bearing fruit. This is not found in the Bible. You know, of course, this is speaking about the original Torah and the Injil that was revealed um, to Musa and Isa. And of course, this has been lost over time. You know, the, the Old Testament was in circulation even before Isa, 
Isa, Yahya, Zakaria, they were not using the Old Testament as their book. They were using the Torah. They were using the Torah that Allah gave them, you know, the actual wahi. And so, um, you know, it's, it's important that, number one, people understand that we don't need the Bible to give dawah. The Sahaba didn't need it, and it's not actually needed. Now, that's not to say that we can't use it. Um, I, I do think that uh, I, I do think it's better not to use it and, and, and just, just present and use that time that you have in Dawah to present the Quran and present Hadith and give the correct narrative of Isa and Yahya and Zakaria and all these prophets rather than waste your time with the Bible. Because when you delve into the Bible, they've, the Christians and Jews have always got answers. Well, there are some points of the Bible which are useful, um, it, but, but not, you know, in, in the sense of showing that it's not the Torah. Um, for instance, um, or, or, for instance, or refuting the Akidah. For instance, in the Bible, it says that Jesus prayed to God, you know. So this, 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 this clearly shows something that, that doesn't make sense if Jesus was God. So that, that's, that's, a, that's quite a nice point to mention, um, you know, uh, showing Jesus' miracles, uh, you know, for the, for the, for the, for the uh, intention of showing common ground. You know, Allah mentions to come to common ground, showing some similarities like, you know, Musa uh, fleeing from Pharaoh and parting the sea and Isa Islam doing miracles, being born miraculously. These things are good to show the Christian that we have similar uh, reports, um, but we it's must very, understand very, that just, hmm. yeah, so yeah, yeah, finish, we finish, must uh, understand, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we must understand that just because these, these kernels of truth within the Bible, it doesn't mean that it's revelation, it doesn't mean it's wahi, you know, don't, don't be fooled thinking, oh, because there's some truth there, this is what's left over from, from wahi. You know, we can't attribute any of the Bible to any of the prophets. It simply, it doesn't have any snad. We don't know the source of it. And, and it's not even in the language uh, of the prophets. So the, the, there's the multiple reasons why, why we would not uh, refer to it as, as revelation. And uh, I spoke to Sheikh Osman Khamis regarding this, yeah. um, uh, you know, uh, regarding, you know, would you describe, Describe it as wahi. You know, there's some truth within the, within the Bible. You know, would we be able to say that these things are wahi? And he said, no, because we don't know the source of it. You know, it's like any other history book. Many history books, they tell true things, but it doesn't mean that it's it's revelation. You know, so it's. Yeah, that's very good. It's very, very profound what you mentioned. I think that and it's one of, the, one of the, the key points I just wrote down as well that even though there might be some truth, because then obviously there's going to be, you know, some of the, the things that are in the Bible that were narrated to the ones who authored it. So there's going to be some origin to some of it, uh, but we can't count it as why, because you don't have the Isnad. And you said it's not even in the same language. You don't have the same, the chain of narration yeah. for it. We don't know where it com comes from. There's no authenticity to it. Not even the same language. So, so, so many things that we cannot claim that this actually is revelation, even though it's some things... And clearly it's something that's been written. It's been in, in the meanings. So even that, after all of these hundreds of years before it was written down, and it, it could have been, you know, even if there was some origin to it, even the things that could have the origin to it, that, that, that itself can be distorted in some some ways as well. I think that's, that's very profound. Something interesting that you mentioned uh, in tomorrow's session, which I'll be delivering in Shalom Ta'ala, uh, for the brothers and sisters who are with us and, and others, um, it's actually about that because... I'm a strong believer that the, the Bible is not the way to give doubt. It's, just, it's, it's, it's not the, the, the best way. But it can be used, like you were saying, at some times. And also, if we're going to be people who are specialized in giving dawah, it's always good to have, you know, as many tools in your arsenal as you can. Because sometimes you might be able to use some of that. And that's very interesting. You mentioned what Allah mentioned in the Quran. And to come to a common ground and common meanings. 
and that's actually what I start off my presentation with tomorrow, yeah. is that. And that's why, that's why I'm using what I'm using. And I actually, I'm focusing on three key points in my presentation taken from the, the, the teaching of the Quran and also what we find in, in the Bible as well, which is um, to, to negate uh, Jesus' uh, divinity from the, from, the Quran, uh, from, from the Quran and from the Bible as well. And also uh, to focus on, on, on his, any, his human nature and the fact that he was a prophet sent from, sent from Allah. All of this can be proven, obviously, in the Quran and, and also even in the Bible as well. So that, that could be an, an eye-opener. It could be a way of benefiting for Christians. And like I said, I don't think it's the main core way I would focus my dawah on, but maybe someone listens to that sometimes during a conversation, that type of thing comes up. So it is beneficial to have, have those things in the arsenal. So how else would you say, if you were to say, you, you, I think there's two things we need to focus on now, um, perhaps, you know, or you can, you know, some other things you want to add in your presentation as well. But what, I'm, what I've gathered thus far, two key things we need to focus on is how can we use the Bible for that, which you, you focused a bit on that. If you, if you want to elaborate a bit more, that's okay. And also then, what is the correct way? If this is not the way, then what is, what is the more uh, efficient way in giving dawah? Yes. Yes, so as, as I said, um, I think the, it, it's sometimes uh, useful to, you know, to, to, to generally point out the similarities between uh, the Judeo-Christian narrative of the prophets and Islam. Like by saying things like, you know, Jesus prayed to God, um, and Musa, um, you know, had a brother, Harun, Aaron, etc., showing that there's similarities. I prefer not to get into the particular verses about the Bible, you know, where you start Bible bashing, you start getting into it, opening the Bible, you know, and the Christians have answers, and, and it, it, you're never out of that, that rut. So it, it's, it's definitely better to just kind of generally come into common ground with them you know, and, 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 and direct them back to the, the Islamic perspective. Um, another part, which is always sometimes useful, sometimes useful, is uh, showing contradictions um, with the intention of uh, proving the Bible is not the word of Allah. Um, I, I'm also not a big fan of it, um, but I think that it's, it can also be useful sometimes. I don't think it's like a, the 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 go-to. Um, you see, uh, Sheikh Uthman uh, Farouk, he he's very popular in this this way. Uh, Ahmadi, that was popular in this way. Um, one of the downfalls of that method is number one, you can sometimes push them away uh, and get their back up. You know, uh, when you're doing this, and one another downfall is sometimes they actually have answers for these these points that you're claiming are, are, are contradictions you know it's like when when the christians come and say oh you know the quran says the sun set in a puddle of mud you know and we're like just, you know just just be quiet you don't even understand what you're talking about and that and that sometimes is how the christians look at us when we're doing these things you know like for instance they say oh ismail uh, 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 ibrahim had one son uh, so they say look this is wrong you know, at the time, maybe he had one son. <laughs> you know, it's like you know, there's there's sometimes way to to harmonize uh, these these uh, apparent con what, uh, these points that appear to be contradictions. So, number one, you should make sure that it is actually a contradiction. Another point is sometimes uh, when before, Muslims you, before, are... you, before you mention another point, I just want to say it's very interesting. As you, as you're talking, I wrote this down as a note to mention that. The same, exact, the same exact thing that you just said is that, you know, a lot of times they'll have an answer or I found a lot of times that Christians as well, and you'll, you'll find that each one of them has their own interpretation. It might not be yeah. a correct interpretation, but yeah. they, and, and most of us are not scholars of the Bible. We're using it so yeah. you can get caught out there like that. You, you know, he yeah. might come with his interpretation and, and he, he might be convincing in, in his way and you're not going to be able to answer that. So it's very, it's, 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 you know, it's interesting. You said that I just, I actually just literally wrote it down right before you said it to bring that up as a point. So I think it's very important for the du'a to understand. You might think, okay, I have this, but then he answers it, you know, and he has a good answer for it. And then what are you going to do? Because you're, you're not someone who specializes in it, so you don't, you don't know how to yeah. answer. You're pretty much stuck there, right? Another point is sometimes the, the, some of these contradictions that are pointed out are things like, um, 
you know, okay, in one verse it says that this king uh, be, be, became king when he was 22, and in another verse he said he was 42. Um, you see, you know these points about numbers and things like this, um, we have some of these things in our own tradition when it comes to Hadith, you know, that like things like numbers and things like that, we're not necessarily deal breakers uh, on, 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 uh, on, on uh, classifying a Hadith as authentic or, or you know, um, so sometimes, you, you know, you're using points which, which and that we, we could also be attacked in, the, in that kind of way. Um, but, but again, it, it does point out that it, that it wouldn't be kalam Allah because, of course, the Quran doesn't make them for errors, um, you know, or, 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 or mistakes. So, so again, I, I think there is a there is a place for it because Allah uses this in the Quran. He says that if it, if it was from other than Allah, meaning the Quran, you would find in it many contradictions. So, of course, an attribute of a book that is not from Allah would have contradictions. And of course, the Bible no, undoubtedly does have contradictions. Um, but again, I don't think it's a go-to. I think it, it. I don't think it's uh, the, the the first step of dawah. Um, the other technique which is often used is um, Muhammad in the Bible, uh, where, where a lot of people present uh, some verses from the Quran. Um, and it's from the Bible, sorry, um, to, and, and say that these verses are speaking about Muhammad. And I personally find this a bit problematic um, just because it's not clear. It, it, you know, it may be Muhammad, it may not be Muhammad. And if we're going to be academically honest, uh, when we say and we don't know who the author is and the, the, Quran, the Bible, sorry, is, is not authentic, then it's impossible for us to really have the the correct tafsir of who that person is. We, if we don't know who the author is, then it's quite impossible to know his intention when he was writing. Of course, if he says something, if the author says something explicitly, like Isa alayhi salam, he's born, and his mother is Maryam, and his cousin is Yahya, and, or, and, and Musa, his son is Harun, and he ran away from Pharaoh. These things are clearly speaking about Musa and Isa, which are described in the Quran. But when it comes to the descriptions of Muhammad in the Bible, they're not very clear. Um, they, they're not clear at all. Um, but when we, when we talk about Muhammad in the Torah and the Injil, this is a different topic. Because when we go to the authentic Hadith, as I mentioned, we've got many clear descriptions of the Prophet وسلم, that in the authentic Hadith in the Torah that was in Medina. So I think these are sometimes nice to present as well. But to the main approach, which I use, um, sorry, Sheikh, did you, did you have no, something? No, 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 continue, 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 yeah. continue, 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 continue. Because that, that was the next question it, we wanted to come to. I mean, uh, obviously, we're telling the brothers this is not the best approach. And we spoke about some ways that we can use it. So now, any, through your experience, what is, the, what is the best approach to use when giving a da'wah to and In general, and to, and to Christians in, in particular. Yeah. Um, first of all, the... The, the basic dawa, as you mentioned, like Durahim Green said, the basic dawa is the same for everyone, whether you're Jewish, Christian, Hindu. A brother asked in the comments before, and I answered just before the, we began, he said, how do we give dawa to Hindus? And I said, that exactly the same as Christians and atheists. You know, and the, core, the core dawa is the same. We must remember that, that, that the core dawa is calling to Islam, presenting you know, the, the, the five pillars, the six pillars of Iman, explaining the Islamic belief, you know, and the, our time should really be taken upon the Christian listening and us presenting Islam, you know. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> but when we're speaking specifically now, if you want to be a bit more specific uh, with the Dawah to Christians, um, I have my own, well, it's not my own, subhanAllah, it's Allah has a, 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 a type of go wrap in the Quran, which is a, a, another method, which is, um, and you could say that this would be this, the, 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 the go wrap to Christians, if you like, 
it's you know where Allah mentions wala to jadidu ahl al kitab illa billati hiya ahsanu illa ladina dalmu minhum wa kulu amanna billati unzil ilayna wa unzil ilaykum wa ilahuna wa ilahuna wa ilahakum wa ahidun wa nahnu lahum muslimun where Allah says um, do not argue with the people of the book except in the best way subhanallah you know and then and, and often this gets quoted and people stop there they say, you know, don't argue with the people of the book except in the best way. But then the last part of the ayah, Allah is telling us a method of dawah. He says, you know, to tell them, we believe what was sent down to us, i.e. the Quran and the Sunnah. And what was sent down to you, meaning the Torah, the Zabur, the Injil, not what was authored by you, where Allah mentions in the Quran that they wrote a book and they claimed it was from Allah. Not that. We don't believe in that. We believe in the Torah's born in Jeel, the Kitab Allah, the Kalam Allah, and, and we believe in the Quran and the Sunnah. So the first step is to establish the basis of all, our, all of our beliefs. Because whatever we believe, whether you're a Christian, whether you're a Muslim, a Hindu, What's the reason for that belief? What's the basis of it? Our basis for, for Tawheed, our basis for accepting the Prophet وسلم, is the Quran and the Sunnah. And this is the, this is the proved revelation from Allah, which is uniquely and absolutely preserved. You know, and that's our solid basis. So whatever we say is now from the Quran and the Sunnah. Whereas the Christians, you've got this, you, you've got Unitarians, you've got Catholics, you've got Protestants, you've got uh, Methodists, you've got many different types of Christians that still exist today. They all read in the same book, but they all have different Akida. Some of them believe in one God. Some of them believe in three gods. Some of them pray to Mary. Some of them say praying to Mary. It, it, they do takfir on the, on the Catholics for that. You know, the Protestants do takfir on 900 million Christians because they pray to Mary, mm. you know, and, and the Unitarians do takfir on the, uh, the Trinitarians praying to Jesus, you know, but they're all reading the same book. And that's the point is that their book is not clear and their book is not authentic. Their book is, cannot be traced back to Isa alayhi salam. So establishing the authority of the Quran and the Sunnah, and, and the, the, uh, that it's, it, this is the basis. This gives us a sound basis, and your book does not give us a, a valid basis of belief. And, and, it, and explaining the Islamic concept that we don't believe in the Bible, we believe in something that was given to Musa, something that was given to Isa. And in fact, the Bible alludes to this. In the Old Testament, it speaks about Musa receiving the Torah from God. So the question is, where is it? Where is the Torah that the Bible's speaking about? It doesn't exist. In, in the New Testament, it says that Isa was preaching the Injil of God. In Hebrew, it says Evangelion of God. Where's that Injil? Because the New Testament came after Isa. You know, so it's like, you know, our, our belief uh, in, in the actual books, establishing this and educating the Christians about Wahi, is the first step you know that's the first step in in the this particular ayah you know uh, which is tell them we believe what was sent down to us and sent down to you you know uh, clarifying that that particular belief the second step is the actual belief yes yeah, this, this, this is what you alluded to earlier i mean we talked about this in the past me and you but maybe the brothers and sisters were taking notes or paying attention you, you talked about a three-step dawah technique Yes. So this is it here in this ayah. Yeah, this is this is the this this ayah is beautiful. You know, I, I think it, it I mean this is from the Quran. Allah is telling us not to argue except in the best way. And then the very next advice, Allah is telling us what to say to them. You know, I, I think there's a good argument to be made that this is a very, a very good way of dawah. You know, if, if Allah has told us this method, uh, you know, it's arguably you know, a very good method. Uh, of course, Allah has told us 
you know, this is a command to tell them, we yeah. believe what was sent down to us and sent down to you, clarifying wahi, clarifying what we mean by revelation, what we accept as authoritative, what we accept as sahi. Um, we don't accept the Bible. We have to be very clear with that. And even when we're presenting these points, whether they're contradictions in the Bible or similarities and common ground, we should prerequisite it with the fact and we should let them know that we do not affirm the bible we do not believe in the bible we should start our dawah with that uh, clarifying that so they don't get mis they don't misunderstand thinking that we do believe in the bible or we believe in parts of the bible etc the bible is not the torahs of born in geo you know that's that's that should be affirmed at the beginning and this is the the evidence for that you know, which is presenting the correct understanding of wahi. The second method, point two, is wahi itself, it, it is, is tawheed. To tell them our God and your God is one. Let's discuss tawheed. You know, let's discuss the actual akidah, which is from the wahi. So now we can come to the six pillars of iman. Clarifying the belief in Allah, the belief in the angels, the books, the prophets, the judgment day, and the belief in the God of Allah. These six pillars of Iman, the Christians fail on every single one of them. They have the wrong understanding of Allah. They have the wrong understanding of angels, because that's where the Holy Spirit comes from. They've, they've actually misunderstood Jibreel to be a part of Allah as well. They don't, they don't know that, but that's where it comes from. The belief in the books, having the wrong understanding of Torah as a born in Geo. The belief in the prophets, they accuse the prophets of sins and doing evil things. So we must clarify that the prophets are, are, are saved from doing bad things or having evil intentions. You know, on, uh, explaining the correct understanding of prophets, explaining Yom al Qiyamah, you know, explaining the divine decree. A lot of the Christians don't even know the purpose of life. Why good things happen? Why bad things happen? Why are we tested? So explaining Qadr of Allah. These things are very helpful. And, and this is the part of Tawheed, explaining our God and your God is one. Why Allah is worthy of worship. Why Jesus, a human being, is not a part of Allah. And why we believe in, in the oneness of Allah. And then the final step is to explain uh, that we are Muslims, that, that all the, 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 the submission part of Islam is not a new religion. All prophets were Muslim. Uh, you know, all prophets were Muslim. Ibrahim, and this, 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 this part about Ibrahim in the Quran, about that he wasn't Jewish or Christian, he was a Muslim. This ayah made real big sense to me because you, you, you know, Ibrahim came before Judaism. He came before Christianity. So what was his religion? His religion was submitting to Allah. And in, in, the, in Arabic, that is Muslim. He was a Muslim. And, uh, you know, so explaining this concept of the religion of Allah, it's not a new religion founded by Muhammad. This is a religion that has been there since day one. And all the prophets submitted to Allah. And then Judaism and Christianity were sects that came off the correct way and invented their own books and invented their own Akida. And they started to worship their own scholars by following what their own scholars wrote and, and, and the judgments that their, their own scholars wrote. So, you know, this three-step method is a good, a good way. And, you know, this is a way that Allah has commanded us to give da'wah. And, and, you know, who is best to, to give us the advice? Allah tells us the way, you know, and, and this is, a, it's like a lock and a key. You know, it, it, Allah knows, uh, you know, what's going to open the hearts. Allah is, is um, it, you know, whether it opens the hearts or not, we've done what Allah has told us to do. Right. Uh, and, and Muslims need to understand this, that, you know, um, our job is to convey the message, not convince not convinced, you know, inshallah, they accept the message and, 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 uh, and, and, and accept the advice, but we're not going to be questioned about that. We're going to be questioned about whether we convey the Islam in the right way, you know, and, and um, you know, we should be focused on, 
on making sure we convey the message with ihsan, with basira, you know, in the right way. You know, we should be, we don't want to say the wrong things about Islam, you know, because you could misguide somebody. Exactly. Like somebody telling me, oh, we believe in the Bible, you know. I, I will, it really put me off in the beginning. You know, but if we just explain we believe in the Torah's one in Geo, it makes more sense, you know. And, and so, something interesting, even now, uh, when you look at the historical facts of, of the, you mentioned, obviously, that we don't have the Isna, the chain of narration. I was listening to, um, from the Arabic department uh, we have in Sahaba Academy, were, uh, I sent you the link, uh, I think, last week about the lecture, uh, Dr. Munqad al-Saqar, who specialized in this. And he, he was mentioning that, that the actual narration they have or the, for the Torah that they use the Torah they have today, I mean, 1,700 years later. Yes. Right? So it's, yes. it's not even like the Bible. Which yeah. is, we're, we're always talking about the Bible, which is, which you, I mean, the, the New Testament, which is, you yes. know, 300 plus years later that they have, right? Yes. We're about, we're about 1,700 years for the Old Testament. And yes. From, the, from, from their, their, their acknowledgement, you know. They have yeah. training scripts, but the ones they're using for what they have today in their text was 1,700 years later. Wow, you know. Yeah. You see, this is the point. I mean, we have something unique in our religion we we, we have it we the quran and and the hadith are preserved through through memorization mm. and this 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 concept of isnad uh, and being um uh, accurately preserved through through um you know through through uh, uh transmission uh, oral transmission is something unique the christians and jews don't have this all they have is manuscripts and their manuscripts are not are dated a long time after uh, the prophets. And not only did, are they dated a long time after the prophets, they're in a different language to what the prophets came with. So imagine it's like having uh, a narration about the prophet and, and you have no isnad. The first time it appears is now, today, you find it today it's 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 on you know the paper of today and it's dated 2022 right and it's in a different language it, it's just it's just not acceptable you know it, can you imagine you're talking at least 1500 as, as you mentioned 1700 years after musa you get the first manuscript of of the old testament and it's in a language that Musa did not speak. That is not acceptable, uh, acceptable for us. And not only that, it doesn't claim to be Kitab Allah. It's not even claiming to be what Musa received. It's claiming to be what Musa said and authored. It's claiming to be Kalam of Musa. Only, only five books of it. Yeah, and, even with, and even within the Kalam of Musa, it speaks about Musa dying. Right, so that that's not the kalam of Musa, yeah. right? And in another part, it says Musa was the most humble man on the planet, and that doesn't sound like something somebody would write about himself, especially if he was the most humble man on the planet. <laughs> especially, especially a prophet of God, right? I mean, maybe another person, yeah, but the prophet of God that yeah. goes against it contradicts, you know, their characteristics and. Subhanallah, yeah. you know, it, it, it's just, it, it's really, like, if you, if, if you really look at it, it's, it's, it's really not credible at all. And I think when we use the Bible, over, overly use the Bible, without pointing out that this is not the source of Inge so the born in jail, we don't believe in it. You have to make that clear. If you don't make that clear, you're giving credibility to the Bible. You know, because the, the Muslims, the, the Christians and the Jews you get this impression that we believe a lot of it and we just pick and choose which parts we believe in. Um, you know, so it's it's not claiming to be the, the Kitab Allah. It, it's, it's not even, we can prove it's not the even the, the Kalam of Musa because it's not preserved. Um, it, you know, it's not even in the language of Musa. You know, and 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 that's it. You know, it's, it can't be used. So, um, yeah, and even, even when you look at the history of the, the compilation of the books, because we have to understand the Bible is not one book. It's a collection of 66 books, if for me, 
for the for, for the for the Catholics, like uh, you used to be, it was seventy three books. They, even the Catholics and the Protestants don't share the same book, right? Of course, they, they agree upon the sixty six books, but even the the compilation of them sixty six books, Musa did not see those sixty six books because these are a collection of books which were authored after the time of Musa. If you ask any Jew or Christian, when was these when were these books written? They will tell you after the time of Musa. And if you ask the Christians, when was the New Testament written? It was authored after the time of Isa was raised. So Isa did not see the New Testament. Isa did not see the, the Gospels or the New Testament. Musa did not see the Old Testament. You know, so so it, it's just not it's just not credible at all. But right right here we could we could use as a, as well, like you said. To point out that we have something that's very unique, the fact that Prophet Muhammad was, I mean, he did see, you know, uh, what was compiled with his command to be written down. All of that was clearly in front of him. And even though obviously we know it was compiled into the book form uh, in one book at the time of Abu Bakr, but I mean, obviously it was clearly all of it was seen and ran directly in front of the Prophet. So we have that uniqueness that they don't have. And it would to bring the, the, the chain of narration right back you know, to the beginning year after year uh, or, or you know century after century and so we, we, we reach the, the, the origin that's something very powerful that we need to focus on and that, I, I think I think even that's a, that's a powerful message like you mentioned in the three, three step Dawah. you see we do have some similarities we believe in the revelation but not the one you have and and then but the one we have is actually very unique let me tell you about it I think that's yeah. very very powerful yeah and if, you, if you look at something here that you know, I, and it's something um, as you know, I mean, I, I was more into inclined into the, you know, the, the, the teaching of Muslims and this, but I, I've kind of got pulled into the, the doubt and non-Muslims. It wasn't really my thing, but I'm getting more and more into it, alhamdulillah, and I'm benefiting more and learning more myself. And one of the things that it's really, really has been very powerful and really, you know, stuck out to me is I'm not just talking about us in English and you know, we're, we're Masakin in English, but I'm talking even in the Mashiach and in, in Arab language, I still don't believe that the Quran has been properly utilized in giving da'wah. I, 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 I still think, because I, if, if you remember, um, and w w I think it was the Tadabur course that we did in Kuwait, yeah. one, of the, one of the examples I gave in the beginning of the Quran, uh, when you make the Tadabur and you go deeper into it, the, the Quran, the, the, some of the scholars mentioned, it's like the sea. You know, if you want to get mm -hmm. the true benefits of, from the sea, if, if you're on the shore, yeah, yes. you're going to get some benefits. But the deeper you go, you know, deep water fishing, deep water diving, that's, that's when you get the true gems and, you know, the, 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 the expensive fish and, and benefits yeah. that you're going to get from the sea. So the same, the same gems and, 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 and pearls that you're going to get from the Quran, it's the deeper you go, you know, into, into the, the devil. And I, I think we really just need to, 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 like, I think it was really beautiful the way you, the three, three step down, how you broke it down from that ayah. You know, yeah. something I, I really focus on, uh, very similar to that, and it reminded me, when it comes Surah Fusilat, and the brothers and sisters who have studied with me before, I always mention this when, when we talk about the virtues of giving da'wah. Uh, and, and, and Surah Fusilat, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and they stop there, full stop, to give the example of the, the virtue of the one who calls to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there's two other very important elements that come after that. Uh, mm -hmm. And he does good deeds. And he says that verily I'm from uh, the from the from the Muslims. That he has that that it is as, that he has, you know he, he, he's very proud to be a Muslim. So there, there's actually three three things mentioned here in this ayah. So that that's that, Subhanallah. That, reflecting on that and going deeper, even and I like like what you know Abdurrahim Green the brothers when they came with the Gorab style, you know taking from the, the, the two verses obviously to 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 prove God's existence. It's right there in the Quran. It's it's no it's no it's no different. You know, it's it's there in the Quran. But we're not utilizing the tools that Allah has given us. And he told me the, the four possibilities for yeah. the creation uh, uh, of the universe. And he did the four things, and he created by uh, any uh, by nothing, or, or did they create it themselves, or was it created by another creator, or created by obviously uh, then by by the creator Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Only four possibilities. So this is what, really going back and benefiting from the yeah. Quran. You know, if you look something, they're talking about giving da'wah to Christians. You mentioned something, and I think that's one of the big takeaways from tonight's session, that 
the Sahaba had access to a, a Bible or to a Torah they could have used. And obviously, when they started to open up, uh, you know, and, and, and conquer different lands and, and give Dawah in different lands, they also could have taken that and made it from their arsenal to really focus on, but they didn't. And that's a good mm -hmm. message for us. Even if you look at uh, the story of uh, Najashi, when the Quraysh sent them to, to, to send back the, the ones who made Hijra and migrated there, and they, they told lies that, you know, once again, false propaganda, Subhanallah. misconceptions Subhanallah. about Islam. They said that actually what the Muslims believe in is this and this and this. And then they started to, uh, so now, now they have to explain what is it that we believe? What did he turn to right away? Jafar ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu an, right away he turned to the wow. Quran and started to read from Surah Maryam. Yeah. And that shows you, that, you know, how we should be focusing on using the Quran in our da'wah. So Musa ibn Umair, if you look at the stories yeah. when he was in Medina, focusing just reading the Quran people uh, to the people there and showing them what Islam was through the Quran. So the Quran is, is, is very powerful. You know, Sheikh, you know, uh, I'm telling you that the Quran, right? SubhanAllah. You know, I, I love, um, uh, this week I've been, I've just been doing some research, you know, trying to finish this book off. And I was reading about the, uh, you know, tafsir. And, you know, the deeper and deeper you go, when you, you know, SubhanAllah, when you can look uh, with the authentic things, you, this is how you build your iman. You know, you really don't need these secondary sources of, of uh, uh, Israeli art and things like this. It really just adds to confusion. You know, it really doesn't help. But uh, especially language things as well. You know, when you look at, deeper into the language, um, uh, I'll share with you later, inshallah, um, uh, something I, uh, I went through. To, uh, and it, it's just beautiful. You know, but even when, when you look at when you look at some of the ayah in the Quran now, in the light of what we've been through today, um, you will understand it uh, in 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 a different way. Like for instance, you you know like waliyakum ahlil injili bima anzal Allahu fi, right? Let the ahlil injil judge by what was sent down. Now. It seems pretty straightforward, but it's very specific. And technically, the word in subhanAllah is very unique. It, Allah doesn't say, let the Ahlul Kitab. He doesn't say, let the Nasara. He, you know, he, he doesn't say, let the Yahud. He says, let the Ahlul Injil, the people of the Injil. Right? So number one, who are the people of the Injil? They don't exist. There's no Ahlul Injil today. There's no one on the planet today that believes in a Kitab Allah sent to Isa, right? What it could be now for was Ahlul Injil. Uh, uh, Salman al Farsi was Ahlul Injil, right? But but not but uh, but, but but today they're Nasara, they're Ahlul Kitab. We'll give them that. But Subhanallah, not Ahlul Injil. And when it says, "Let them judge by what? By the Injil." Allah doesn't say judge by the Injil because that's even that's a misunderstood term today because you got the Arabs calling the Bible the Injil, right? And the New Testament Injil, he says, by what was sent down again, this concept of the Injil being something given, you know. But, but, but would, would we understand from this that the Injil was there during that time, the, the original Injil was there? Well, well, number one, uh, the tough seer of this is that that they they supposed to follow the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. That's the understanding of that. That ayah is, is telling us, telling the, the people of the Injil, that you should judge by it in the sense of the Injil was telling you to follow and accept Prophet Muhammad when he comes, which means technically, judge by what was sent down is the Quran, is by now accepting the final Prophet accepting the final sharia, accepting the final kitab Allah. Not that now we stick to the Injil. No. He's telling, let Ahlul Injil judge by what was sent down, which is accept Islam, accept the new prophet, the final prophet. You know, that's the, the tafsir of uh, Ibn Hajjah. And, it, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's, it's important because, you know, people have taken this to say, oh, 
uh, Christians can judge by the Bible. <laughs> no, it doesn't, not at all. You know, the, the, you know in, in history, the, 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 you know, the, the, there's been times where people have misunderstood that, you know, and, uh, you know, the, it, it's, it's not correct. But, but, but when you look at the wording of it, it's subhanAllah, it fits with what we've been talking about. But even if there was an Injil in Medina, it's not the Bible. That's the point we're getting at. And the Christians, that a lot of the times the Christians show this verse to say, look, it's saying that the people of the gospel, because they translate Injil to gospel, judge by what was sent down. Basically, as if it's, it's allowing them to judge by the Bible. No. Um, the first question we ask the Christian, do you believe in a kitab Allah called the Injil sent from Allah given to Prophet Isa, which tells us that Isa is not God? And they say, no, we don't believe in that. So you're not Ahlul Injil. <laughs> it, the Quran is not speaking to you. It's not about you, you know. Um, but it's, it, there's many, many examples like that. Like when it says the unlettered Prophet mentioned in the Torah and the Injil in the home, which is with them. Right, yeah. this is he was clearly mentioned in the Torah in Geo, which was with them in Medina. But this has kind of been taken as a blanket statement to mean the Bible. Is it possible Muhammad could be mentioned in the Bible? Yeah, it's possible, you know, because the Bible was authored after the Torah and the Injil. But the descriptions in the Bible regarding Muhammad, it might be about him, it might not be about him. It's it, it's speculation, it's it's you know, it might be. But it, it kind of undermines our credibility when we use these things, because we're saying that we don't believe in the Bible. We don't know who the authors of the Bible are, but then we're claiming to know the understanding of, the, of these unclear verses. It's a bit contradictory. But if we stick to presenting the points which are mentioned in the Hadith, uh, which describe Muhammad, which is mentioned in the Torah in Medina, very nice description, subhanAllah. And uh, inshallah, I'm going to be doing a series about this on my YouTube channel, going through all these descriptions of the Prophet, which were mentioned in the Torah and Injil in Medina. And uh, there's just some beautiful uh, lessons to be learned. Very good. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, if, if you remind me, when, when, I, when I do finally get back to Turkey, inshallah, um, the, the new, uh, one, of the, one of the better, um, Prince of Fath al Bari, mm. which was the uh, one that was checked by Sheikh Suhaib on a note. I actually just bought it. Uh, I ordered it some time back and it, it actually came when I was traveling. My son picked it up for me. 26 volumes. I haven't got a chance to start reading it yet. Mm. But I'm very interested to go back to see what you mentioned about the, the narration of Warak ibn Nufal. I made a note of it here. Yes. He mentioned you know, that the Namus that came to Musa, and he said it's also one that came to uh, Isa alayhi salam. So yes. perhaps I'm thinking that in the footnotes, they're probably going to mention, the, they should mention the, the, the source for that. So it's very interesting. Inshallah. I hope so. I'd love to find it if you, if you can actually find that. If you remind once I get back, that I, I'll look yes. into the, to that hadith in the beginning of Sayyid Bukhari and say, hopefully we can, we can find it. That would be I don't know what version. I, I, have, I don't have a 26 volume version. I think it's, it's probably about 10. I, I, have, um, I have I have I have, I have a, a bit of a thing where I'm kind of when when a, when a better copy comes out I usually get it even if I spend a lot of money to do it yeah. but um, so I have actually four or five different volumes of Fatil Bari it's one of my main books you know my main library in Sudan I have, I have about three copies and the one I have with me in Turkey I have, I have two copies so the one the, the one I had before was fifteen volumes or four, th thirteen or fourteen yeah, with the, with the introduction. Uh, yes. So that then the one that but the new one has twenty six. So obviously one of the one of the key things that the ones who go over the text is they mention in the footnotes the different narrations where you can find the, the resources. I'm hoping yes, inshallah. Had you mentioned that we'll be able to find it there, so that should be very beneficial, uh, inshallah, Tana. Yeah. Exactly. And just to summarize, and, it, and really, I think we went basically to the main point. But if you could just add to that, you know, we went through obviously the issue of the Sahab and how they use Dawah using the Quran. I think that's one of the, the key takeaways. But just want, quickly, if you could just summarize the three-step da'wah. Uh, I sent to the brothers in, in the footnotes, uh, or excuse me, in the chat here, the uh, the source for that, the three-step da'wah, which is 
Uh, Surat Al-Ankabut, chapter 29, verse 46. Uh, yeah. There's the verse I did in Arabic and English. But if you could just summarize so the brothers can take that home as well. You know, step one, step two, step three. And then they can yeah. they, have, they have the source in the ayah. So that could be very beneficial as a tool when giving da'wah and, and, and speaking to Christians in Shalom Ta'ala. Yes. Um, you know, subhanAllah, Allah mentions, don't argue with the people of the book. You know, accept. You know, this is the, 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 this is like an exception. You know, this is this is the method, and um, and of course, Allah mentions, uh, you know, to 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 explain to them and to discuss what was sent down to us and what was sent down to them. That's step one. You know, clarifying the basis of belief, the basis of our our religion, the basis of our iman and Sharia. And, and this is the Quran and the Sunnah. So we can discuss with them what the Quran is. What is the Quran? Is it, is it a, a book authored by people? Is it a book authored by Muhammad? No, we must clarify. Don't assume that the Christians understand what the Quran is. Of course, we all know it's Kitab Allah, Kalam Allah, etc. They don't know that. So go into detail, explain to them, we have this book which was revealed to Prophet Muhammad. It wasn't the word of Muhammad. It was given to him word by word through Jibreel, right? And through dreams, there was different methods of wahi. You don't have to go into too much detail about the methods and forms of wahi, but just to explain that this was given from Allah to, to the Prophet Muhammad. And this is uh, revealed to him over 23 years, and it was compiled and collected and this is in a time when he was he was trying the people were trying to assassinate him and he had to do hijra and many bad things were happening and you imagine how can you compile this book in 23 years you know uh, explain what the quran is and then explain the hadith the the sunnah that this is also a form of revelation but it's, it's expressed through the speech of muhammad peace be upon him and it's been preserved you know the authentic hadith been preserved and we can trace it back and it's fully preserved and even western scholars are, are impressed by the level of preservation of the quran and the hadith but ehrman recently spoke about the 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 manuscripts that they found in birmingham and he said that you know why haven't the christians been able to preserve their book as good as the the muslims have you know very one of the most early documents and then explain we believe what was sent down to them you know, what was originally sent down from the Islamic perspective, the Torah, a book given to Musa, the Zabur given to Dawood, and the Injil given to Isa. This was the Kalam Allah, the Kitab Allah. This was not authored by Musa, not authored by Isa, not authored by later scribes, but given to the prophets. And we can explain how what they have today is not that. They, in fact, have a collection of biographies, a collection of poems, a collection of narrations, uh, by different people over a period of two and a half thousand years. These books have been authored over a period of two and a half thousand years. And this is simply not acceptable. Uh, it's not acceptable of a, as a valid basis of belief. The second step is to explain our actual beliefs, so the beliefs in Tawheed, our God and your God is one. And you can take this time to clearly explain Tawheed, as well as I would say, in this part, you can explain the six pillars of Iman as well, possibly, if you have time. You know, our Dawah should definitely be rooted in the six pillars of Iman. You know, so it, use this time to explain the actual doctrines of Islam. And you can also explain what's required of them in terms of the actions of the five pillars uh, with that as well. And then finally, we explain that we are Muslims. What does it mean to submit to Allah? This is the religion of Allah. It's the religion of all the prophets. It's not a new religion invented by Muhammad, peace be upon him. It was from the time of Adam. It's the, it's the correct way that we are required to submit to Allah. We, the basis is the wahi. The, the, the wahi tells us what to believe and tells us how to believe and worship. That's the, that's the way. It starts with the wahi. It tells us what to believe and how to worship, subhanAllah. You know, and, and they don't have that. They, they don't know how to worship Allah. They don't have a sharia. 
They don't have any solutions for anything. Islam tells you the details of, of inheritance, you know, uh, the, the roles of a man and a woman in society, the details of what happens uh, when, when somebody does something wrong, the punishments, how to, how to deal with a, a, a society. It's not just a, a Islam can, can be a Sharia that governs a small village and it can be a Sharia that governs a, a, a country as big as America or as big as the whole world. It's such a, a unique thing. And literally, Judaism and Christianity doesn't have anything to offer. And that's why they've had to go and, and use secularism, uh, you know, to govern uh, their people. So, inshallah, I hope you got some benefit. Yeah, if, you, if you add to that, even, even our spirituality, a, a lot of times they're, they're taking things you know, from, from Buddhism and from other things, yeah, because they don't, they don't, even in their own religion, they don't have proper spirituality. Therefore, they, they're looking at and other sources and combining that with their religion. I can't hear you. Yeah, yeah that can hear you. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, they don't have any solutions. It's, uh, and, uh, you know, the main thing for, for the day who's listening is, your job is to convey, not convince. Don't put the, 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 the responsibility of guidance on your shoulders because you're never going to win. <laughs> that's, that's the job of Allah to guide. Your job is to convey with Ihsan and Basira. Do it in the right way. Don't do it because it works. What I mean by that is don't do a method of dawah that you might be doing something in Dawah that where you get millions of people converting to Islam, but it's the wrong method. For instance, setting up a, a music concert to give Dawah. Even if you get millions of people accepting Islam, it's done in the wrong way. You might even be punished for that type of Dawah. You know, do Dawah with, with, with knowledge, with Ihsan and with Basira, with certainty, with the correct knowledge, even if nobody accepts Islam. I would rather turn up on Yom al uh, with, you know, inshallah, I've done dawah in the correct way. And I tell Allah, I did dawah as best of my knowledge. I, I, I consulted the scholars, I went to the people of knowledge, and I tried to do it in the right way. Inshallah, I, I'm, I'm successful with that. And nobody accepted Islam. Rather than, you know, do it the wrong way, and even if you get shahadas, it's, 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 it's not good. You know, you, you get rewarded for doing things in the right way. So, um, you know, and, and again, the, the more knowledge you have of Islam, the more effective your dawah is going to be, the more, the more tools you're going to have to call upon and use uh, in, your, in your dawah. And, uh, and it's a lifelong journey. It's something you don't stop seeking knowledge and you don't stop giving dawah. It's something very, very profound that I, I found uh, recently. Uh, it's actually it was written in a Tadabur book, but the, the scholar, he mentioned that if, if you look into the Quran, the, the first four chapters focus in, 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 in detail, especially Ali Imran, but all, all four of them have, have details about Ahl Kitab. But it's actually a, a gradual approach that we should benefit from when it comes to giving da'wah as well. And he said, for example, he said, if you look at Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, it focuses on showing many of the mistakes that Al-Kitab has, but also showing like what you mentioned in, in, in your presentation, you know, the, the uniqueness or the difference that we have in our da'wah, which makes our da'wah special. So Surah Al-Baqarah focuses on, on that aspect. The, 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 the third chapter, which is, you know, we're talking about the, the if you don't count Surah Al-Fatiha, the second, which is... Uh, in a, uh, the chapter three, which is Ali Imran, it focuses on, uh, you know, like a, a dialogue between uh, Ahl Kitab and showing the similarities, as we mentioned in the, in the verse earlier. And then if you go to the, the next chapter, which is Surah Al-Nisa, here there starts to be more of a, a, of, of a criticism of Ahl Kitab and showing, you know, the, uh, the ghulu uh, that they have, you know, the, the, the extremes or extremes that they reach in their belief and the ikhtilaf, the differences they have in their aqidah and their creed. And then if you go to the, uh, the next surah, Surah Al-Ma'idah, here in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it, you know, 
uh, an, an intense confrontation with the people of the book and, and, and intense confrontation and showing what is, what is the haq. And it clearly, you know, we, we went yeah. through the levels with you. We started off showing, you know, first of all, we showed you some of the mistakes that you guys have. We showed you some, what makes us unique in, the, in, in, in Al-Baqarah. Then we had, we had a dialogue with you. We showed you the similarities. Then there was some criticism in the last chapter in, in Surah Al-Nisa. Now in Surah Al-Ma'idah, the, the intense, you know, confrontation comes with showing what is the haq, with no doubt about it. For example, in, in, in the verse when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْمَسِيحُ بِمَرِيَمُ In a very clearly, clear cut, that they, they have disbelieved the ones who say that Isa, the son of Mary, was, was Allah. Um, so oh. and he, this is very, and he, uh, I found this very, very profound and very like, wow, you know, look at it. You never really think about it like that. But if, when you really make that to Debo and that, on it, you see that each each chapter, even though very long chapters, that they're coming with that, you know, gradually building up until until you reach that. That's a, that's a it's, it's very beneficial yeah. in giving Dawah as well. You know, you know one one thing I was thinking of recently is you know um, uh, Surah Ali Imran. You know the, the the today's Yahoo. Not only do they reject Isa alayhi salam, they reject Maryam, they reject reject Zakaria. They reject Yahya, they reject Imran, right? And Allah has honored the whole family by naming, you know, it, it, the, the whole surah uh, about them. And, and it's, it's really important to know because at, at the time, the, the, today's Jews, the Pharisees, they all come from the, the sect of the Pharisees. The, the Old Testament predates Isa, you know, and, and uh, it predates Yahya, it predates Zakaria. So these misguided sects will even predate, uh, you know, uh, Zakaria, Yahya, Isa. And then, so Zakaria, Yahya, and Isa came to give them doubt. Even according to the New Testament, it speaks about the Pharisees, you know, and they came to give them doubt and they rejected them. So you had the Old Testament being used by this misguided sect. And you, and then Allah uh, chose new prophets, Zakaria, Yahya, Isa, and re-revealed the Torah to them. Okay, gave the Torah to them. As Allah mentioned, he, he, Isa was given the Injil. He was he was given the Injil. He was also born with the Torah. Uh, Isa mentions this. Uh, you know, uh, one in the first one of the first miracles he did when he spoke. The first thing he said. Allah has given me a book and made me a prophet. <laughs> you know, um, he was given the Torah. And also, he was also given the Injil. Um, and this is what he was using to call these people away from this book that they'd authored themselves, you know, and claim, claiming it was from Allah. You know, so the, 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 the Jews, they don't only reject Isa, they reject many of the prophets, uh, all the family of Ali Imran. Uh, the brothers and sisters who are with us, if there's any questions, if you can send them in on the, on the chat, inshallah, before we wrap up. Uh, we went a, a bit over, but alhamdulillah, it was very beneficial. Jazakallah uh, khairan for taking out your time and, and sharing that with us. Uh, the, 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 the book it's, that, you, you need, that we have the PDF of, this is something that in, is printed and you pass out the same one, is that correct? Yeah, you can share that with people if you like. It's, it's a small Dawa book. Um, the, just the brother, for... yeah, we have the PDF of, of the book that our brother John wrote about this. He's in the NGO. There's probably a link for it online, but if, if not, you can contact the number for Sahaba Academy um, yeah. and uh, we'll send it to you directly on, on, on WhatsApp, inshallah. And people have permission to print it, to put their own logo on the back or whatever they want to do with it. Is they, you know, permission is there. If you're anywhere in the world, you want to print it. If you find benefit from it, put it on your dawah tables. And the size of it is A6 size. It's only a small booklet. Um, I'm currently writing a big book on this. Um, and, and it's coming along uh, very nicely, inshallah. So I'll be releasing that soon, inshallah. But this is more for dawah. This is more for dawah to Christians. But well, Muslims will benefit from it as well, inshallah.